Good day, everyone. Welcome to Harris McSheffrey Music. I've been thinking a lot lately about a certain book from the 1960s, and it's a book on music. And it's a bit of an academic book, I admit, but here it is. This 1960s book makes, still makes me wonder. Problems of Modern Music. The Princeton Seminar in Advanced Musical Studies. Edited by Paul Henry Lang. Now, I will give you a note on the content in this book. The masculine pronoun dominates these essays in the book. Because the gender-neutral inclusive language of today's academic world was not commonplace in 1960s academia. Anyway, still, this book makes for 121 pages of some interesting, intriguing reading, if you're up for a challenge. And just for the record, I've actually read this whole book cover to cover, not all of it in one sitting. But it's still something that may be worth revisiting as I listen to some music someday in the book. They do mention a lot of interesting composers. Some of these essays are actually written by composers themselves. And yes, they were before the 21st century. Still, still interesting. For example, there's the essay, Problems and Issues Facing the Composer Today, by Roger Sessions, Analysis of the Day by Edward T. Cohn, Shop Talk by an American Composer by Elliot Carter, Notes on a Piece for Tape Recorder by Vladimir Yushachevsky. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the name right, but anyway, I'll put the title below. Extents and Limits of Serial Techniques by Ernst Krenak. And Bartok's quote unquote serial composition. And that essay is by Alan Fort, one of the big names of set theory in music composition and theory. Especially eight tonal music, or post tonal music, as some prefer to call it. And we've got 12 Tone Invariants as Compositional Determinants by Milton Babbitt. Yes, Milton Babbitt is the guy famously known for an essay that, party against his wish, an editor ended up titling that essay, Who Cares If You Listen? <laughs> Proof that clickbait is not limited to the popular music world and YouTube world, it exists in academia as well! <laughs> In some ways, music has come away since then, but some of the issues also sound quite familiar today if you look around. And some things would still intrigue the composers of today, like different styles of music. Like shoegaze, anyone? Speaking of which, and there are female composers working in this field as well. In fact, if you look at Wikipedia's entry on female composers, you start seeing more concentration of composers who are female whose works have survived through the 20th century and onward. And I give thanks for feminism for that, and also for, for the advocacy for improved mental health. Anyway. anyway, Problems of Modern Music as a book is published by the Norton Library, which is published by W.W. Norton and Company, Incorporated. There's the publication information there, if you want to read it, you can pause the video to read it. Anyway, thank you. Anyway, this has left me with food for thought, and I hope it leaves you some food for thought as well. Now, for examples of female composers who still work today, I will link to a song, some analysis, my analysis of the Juice Girls song, Fish Eye.
as an example. Anyway, another shout out to the Juice Girls again. I love their music a lot. In fact, I even performed one of their songs not long ago. It's called Crystal Queen, or CQ for short. Anyway, thank you. I'll put some links in the description. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I wish you all peace of mind and good health. Thank you.